Hi, I'm Tom Stone, and we're coming to you today from the roof of ThermalCare's factory and headquarters in Niles, Illinois. We're doing that so that we can discuss cooling towers like you see here. ThermalCare offers two styles of cooling tower, the FT series and the FC series. The FT series is a round tower and it's for smaller capacities, ranging from 38 tons up to 120. The FC series is a square tower, like you see here, and it ranges from 100 tons up to 240. An important thing to note when discussing cooling towers is that a cooling tower ton is different than a chiller ton. A chiller ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour, where a tower ton is 15,000 BTUs per hour. The reason for this is because a cooling tower is often used to cool the condenser of a chiller. The heat that a chiller rejects out of its condenser is a combination of the heat that it picks up from the process that it's actually cooling, and in addition to the heat of compression from the chiller's compressor in its refrigeration circuit. That 3000 BTU per hour difference between a chiller ton and a tower ton is that heat of compression from the chiller's refrigerant compressor. The reason for this is it's simpler to note that a 100 ton chiller is going to need a 100 ton tower. If you did not have those two different chiller ton versus tower ton, you would actually need to say a 100 ton chiller requires a 125 ton tower. So it helps to eliminate that potential spot of confusion. Cooling towers are rated based on a standard set of parameters. That includes 95 degree inlet water, 85 degree outlet water, all with a 78 degree wet bulb. A wet bulb is essentially a measurement of the moisture content of air and helps you judge how easily water can evaporate. The operation of a cooling tower is pretty simple. These FC series like you see here really only have one moving part, which is the fan. What happens is the warm water is pumped up to the tower and is sprayed through nozzles over what's called the fill. And the fill actually looks kind of like a honeycomb structure. And what that does is it actually creates more surface area, which helps promote evaporation. So that warm water is sprayed over the fill. And as it gravity drains down through the tower, the fan at the top is pulling air through the sides through these louvers here. That is a counterflow tower because the water is going one direction and the air is going the other direction. This also helps to promote evaporation. The whole reason we want to promote evaporation is because that's how a cooling tower actually cools the fluid. When you change the state of water from liquid to gas, a lot of energy is absorbed in that change of state. This is an extremely effective and efficient means of pulling energy out of that water because whatever water doesn't evaporate has now a reduced temperature because the energy has been removed to evaporate the water that did leave. One of the key things to think about here though is that when water evaporates, only the water leaves. And so any dissolved solids that were in that are now left behind. And so that concentration in your cooling tower water actually increases. There's different methods to control this, including water treatment, bleeding off to drain and replacing with new fresh water. You also need to continually replace the water that's evaporated. All of ThermalCare's cooling towers use a direct drive fan with a TEAO motor that's a totally enclosed air over. So that way it's protected from the elements and it uses the air that it's actually already pulling through the system to cool that motor. It also includes permanently sealed lubricated bearings, so there's no maintenance required to routinely add lubrication for those. We also need to discuss about the discharge air that's coming out drawn by that fan and fan motor. What will happen is if you're not in an open area like we have here, if there are walls or fences, anything like that, that can actually cause that hot air that's being pulled out to recirculate back in, creating what's known as a microclimate. This can really inhibit the ability of the tower to evaporate and reject heat, reducing its capacity and not actually maintaining enough cooling for your process. All of ThermalCare's towers are constructed with fiberglass shells, stainless steel fasteners, and internal plastic components. This basically eliminates the possibility of corrosion from rust or anything like that while the unit operates. They have an extremely long lifespan and one of the special things about the FC series that you see here 
is that the fiberglass is actually sprayed into a negative mold rather than onto a mold. And what that difference is, is that the outside surface of this tower is smooth and it's not lumpy like typical fiberglass that's sprayed over a mold. What that does is it eliminates the ability for those recesses to gather dirt and debris and it actually keeps the tower looking very nice and clean. This one here has been on top of our building for seven years and we've never cleaned it and it looks pretty great. With our cooling towers, we offer a structural steel base option like this one that you can see here. What this does is it helps to mount the tower on say a roof with your roof curbs or even if you're gonna mount it next to the side of your building using an elevation package, which we also offer as an option. The reason for elevating the tower or mounting it on the roof is because they gravity drain. The reason for this is it's a good solution for freeze protection. If the system shuts down and the pump stops pumping, that water that's residing in this tower while it's operating will drain down with no power requirement to pump it out. And so it protects the situation where you shut down in a cold climate while you're not operating your process. Cooling towers can be an extremely cost-effective way to provide cooling to your system. One of the key considerations though is what temperature you require for your cooling water. If it is much lower than 85 degrees, you're gonna need to look at other options because with a cooling tower, we're limited by the ambient conditions, both the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature, otherwise known as kind of the humidity and the ability to evaporate, which is how the tower cools the process water. While cooling towers are a cost-effective and simple solution for cooling your process, you do need to consider that they will require regular maintenance and chemical treatment for the process water. That chemical treatment will help prevent corrosion and scale buildup in your piping, and it will also help prevent biological growth, like Legionnaire's disease. It's very important to work with a chemistry expert local to your facility. That way, they can sample your specific water and tailor the system needs and chemicals that they will use to your process. Cooling towers are a nice solution and they're easy to use, but there are many different facets to the design and implementation. Let ThermalCare's team of experts help you select the right equipment for your needs to ensure the best possible solution. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something.